A while ago, I reviewed a series called House of Five Leaves by Natsumi Ono. The story has samurai and old school gangs, and it takes place in a historical time period. But something I remember was the distinct character designs. So, as you expect, when I saw this little gem hiding on my stuff, I had to add it to my buy list. So is an 11 episode romance slice of life series based on the manga by Natsumi Ono and published by Ota Publishing. The anime from David Production is from director Mitsuko Kase for the spring 2009 season. As of this review, it has been licensed by Nozomi Lucky Kari. When Nicoletta was a little girl, her mother Olga abandoned her and ran off to Rome to remarry. Now, 15 years later and a young woman, she travels to Rome with the intention of ruining her mother's life. She tracks Olga down to a restaurant called Casetta del Oso, but the second Nicoletta steps through its door, everything changes. It's a peculiar place staffed entirely by mature gentlemen wearing spectacles and, like their clientele, she is helpless against their wise smiles and warm voices. Before Nicoletta realizes it, her plans for vengeance start to fade, and she's swept up in the sweet romance of everyday Italian life. Paradiso blends digital and CGI animation together for an interesting look and feel. Now I've had my gripes with CGI animation in the past, but this is actually one of the few shows where I think it worked rather well. That's because the CGI is basically left in the backgrounds in our wonderful Italian dishes and wines. Giving this kind of contrast shows Rome in a different way than what digital animation could accomplish. Since Paradiso doesn't have to worry about action or gory horror scenes, this makes the combination easy on the eyes. That, along with Ono's rather distinct character designs, makes the series look fairly realistic and natural. As for the soundtrack, we have a mix of soothing jazz, classical, and a dash of Italian culture that make a very pleasant sound. The theme songs are also simple and rather soothing, though the ending theme is certainly something adorable to laugh at. This star is actually the most charming and relaxing that I've seen in a long time. I think the last time I saw a simple charming show was Red Data Girl last year, though Paradiso is on a different level. There's nothing complex about the story as it just follows Nicoletta as she enjoys Rome and Del Rosso. This series isn't plot heavy but more character heavy as there isn't really a constant plot. This isn't a bad thing because this series is supposed to be a character driven show. Slice of Life series tend to have more focus on characters rather than plot, though sometimes they do have plot. But in Paradiso's case, if there were an actual plot of sorts, I think it wouldn't do well as an 11 episode series. There would have to be many more episodes if they want to have both plot and character development intermingled successfully. The end of the series is also rather warm and satisfying, as all the loose ends are tied up in pretty little bows. The characters vary in personality and background, and we get to learn their stories throughout the series. Nicoletta is cheerful and hardworking who is trying to grow into her own. Claudio is chivalrous, yet at the same time awkward when it comes to women. Luciano can be harsh sometimes, but he does have a soft spot every now and again. Vito can be seen as a womanizer, yet he is a devoted husband. Furio is kind-hearted and a talented chef. Teo can also be harsh sometimes like Luciano, but only because he wants to push Nicoletta in becoming a great chef. And then there's Gigi, my favorite character out of the bunch. Basically, he's a wine expert that rarely talks and loves to eat. It makes for some rather funny moments. There's also other characters that appear such as Nicoletta's mother, Olga, the restaurant owner and Olga's husband, Lorenzo, Claudio's ex-wife, Gabriella, Luciano's daughter and grandson, and so on. For an 11 episode series, I have to give props to the writers because being able to squeeze out bits of character development for at least 6 characters in the series seems like a daunting task. It didn't result in anything too powerful, but at the same time, it was still rather interesting to watch the experiences these characters go through, as well as their connections with each other and with the history of the restaurant. Nozomi doesn't typically dub the series they pick up, and parody, so is no exception to this. In regards to Japanese casting, Fumiko Rikasa's Nicoletta was a fun and feisty performance while Jean Yamanoi's Claudio was a nice gentle performance. Mitsutaka Tachikawa, Takio Korida, Kazuhiko Nishimatsu, and Yoji Ueda's performances of Luciano, Vito, Ferio, and Teo were all also great listens. 
As for Shijuo Kiyama's portrayal of Gigi, the moments where he does speak are interesting, because I feel like Gigi should be younger due to his height, but since he is rather older than some of the other staff members, the mature voice work makes sense. Other voice actors I should mention include Haruhi Terida and Kenji Nomura as Olga and Lorenzo. All performances are easy listens and all are rather soothing. I have a thing for nice soothing voices, okay? By the end of our delicious meal, Ristorante Paradiso is rather simple and charming. It doesn't have a complex story, but it has really fun characters that bring the series to life. I don't normally have an interest in men much older than I am, but I can see the appeal as these older gentlemen are rather charming. If you get the chance to buy this series since it's not streaming legally, then give it a try. It's something different than your average anime, and it brings a lot more charm into the slice of life genre. Though if you're more of an explosion kind of otaku, this one might not be your cup of coffee. Next time, we use our friend as a weapon, a sinful crown we shall adore. Until then, otaku on my friends.